Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Father. So I welcome you all to today's uh, total consecration class. Today is the third day in this ongoing journey to consecrate ourselves to Jesus through men. So we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come Holy Spirit, come by means of the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. Come Holy Spirit, come by means of the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. Come Holy Spirit, come by means of the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. So now we will take the readings. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The pastors by jeered at him, they shook their heads and said, So you will destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Then save yourself. If you are God's son, come down from the cross. The chief priests with the scribes and elders mock him in the same way. He saved others, they said. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. The gospel of the Lord. Yes, to the Lord Jesus Christ. So the theme for today's class is take up your cross and follow me. I will also like to read from the writings of St. Louis Montfort before we begin the discussion. Incarnate wisdom loved the cross from his infancy. At his coming into the world, while in his mother's womb, he received it from his eternal father, he placed it deep in his heart, there to dominate his life, saying, My God and my Father, I chose this cross when I was in your bosom. I chose it, I choose it now in the womb of my mother. I love it with all my strength, and I place it deep in my heart to be my spouse and my mistress. So today's class is on the cross. The Lord asks us to take up our cross and follow him. In many passages of the Gospels, Jesus laid this emphasis on the cross, denying ourselves and carrying our crosses and following him. Like the Gospel of Luke chapter 9 verse 23. Mark chapter 8 from verse 24 to 35. Matthew 16 verse 24. Mark 10 verse 38 and many other passages of the scriptures. The Lord in all these passages asks us to renounce ourselves and take up our cross and follow him. But in this devotion to the most precious word of Jesus, the Lord is even asking us to go extra miles not only to carry our crosses and follow him, but to help him to carry the rejected crosses. What then is the cross? In a simple term, without going into the details, the cross is the symbol of suffering and pain. It is the symbol of all those things that are unpleasant to us, like bereavement, prolonged sickness, family crisis, poverty, financial difficulties, humiliations, accusations, lack of marriage partner, and so on. The truth is that there is no assurance that our lives here on earth will be without crosses. There is no assurance 
that this life will be a bed of roses for us. This is why a Swiss philosopher, Jean Jacques Rousseau, once said that man born of a woman is born free, but everywhere in chance. And St. Bernard of Clairvaux. You need to go out and listen to this priest. You come upstairs now. <laughs> And St. Bernard of Clairvaux referred to this world as the Valley of Tears. As human persons, we are hedonistic in nature. That is to say that we have inclination towards pleasure and comfort and aversion for pains and sufferings. This is why the majority of Christians in today's world do not believe in the cross but only in miracles, in God's favor and blessings. You will hear such Christians singing and saying that God of miracle is their father and that sufferings and pains are not their portion. One thing we need to understand about miracles is this. Jesus uses earthly miracles to draw us to himself that he might show us the true and the perfect way. During his earthly ministry, he used earthly miracles to draw, to draw people's attention to himself, that he might do the greatest miracle in their lives. The miracle of transformation, the miracle of repentance, the miracle of conversion, the miracle that whenever it happens, there will be joy in heaven and on earth. The Gospel of Luke chapter 15 verse 7 tells us that there is a great joy in heaven over the repentance of a sinner. This is the greatest miracle, the miracle of grace. So Jesus uses the earthly miracle to draw us to himself that he might perform this everlasting miracle the miracle of conversion and repentance in our lives. In the book, 15 Levels of Perfection by the Mystic of This Devotion, Broad Abanabas. In the second level, according to him, the second level is the age of miracle, and it follows after the first level, the level of the first love. The level of the first love is our first encounter with Christ. That time we encounter Christ and desire to follow him all the days of our lives. That time we made many promises never to abandon him. That is the first uh, love, the first level. So after that level comes the level of or the age of miracle. I would like to read that something from St. Agnes, who gave this message. Friends of God, this is the level of the miracle seekers in the world. First teachers take advantage of the weakness of the people at this level to make their money. And you should know that the greater number of those who are running the race are at this level. This level is crowded so much with people. That is why the first pastors base their teachings on signs and miracles. And you observe that any time miracle is the theme of preaching, crowds of people will come. With this, many are deceived. Those who see lights at this level and capture God's love are the only people that can survive this level and grow higher. God happens to do all these miracles for the people at this age to win their love. And still, many will not benefit owing to their love for the things of this earth. Many earn their knowledge of God at this level which will always result to backsliding and finally spiritual death. 
So according to St. Agnes that gave this message, the majority of Christians are in this age of miracle. Even many that have passed this level are now back into it. As she said, there are many levels we have to go, but many end their knowledge of God in this level. So miracle is for a purpose. Don't use this miracle to win our love. And when that love is won, he will show us the true way, the way of the cross. The hymn 92, or this little lily symbol book, hymn 92 says, that is Christ saying in this scene, you must follow the desert way to reach the promised land. You must. He said you must, not you may. It is emphatic. You must follow the desert way. Verse one of these things says, my way is a desert road. It is a Calvary way, a narrow way with rough stones. You must follow the desert way. The verse two of it says, I chose the desert way for the sake of my children. Let all my lovers follow it to a joyful home. That way you are following is not the true way. That wide road, which many are following, leads to perdition. Then the final verse of it, verse 5 says, This royal road is a gracious way to those who love me. They see the ocean of my sanctifying grace along the way. So in this scene, Jesus is telling us that we must follow the desert way. The desert way is the only way. There is no other way that leads to life. There is no other way that leads to salvation. Only the desert way. That is the way on the cross. Also, in one of the messages of this devotion, precisely the message of 21st July 2000, Jesus said, my children, the special gift I offer to my, my lovers is the chalice which I drank. Those who love me accept it with joy. He also said, you do me more harm by rejecting your crosses. So Jesus is saying that we do him more harm by rejecting our crosses. Those things that happens to us, there are daily crosses, and there are crosses, special crosses, he prepares for us for life. Even when we think that the cross is coming from an enemy, from our neighbor, we should still see the hand of Jesus offering that cross to us. That is nothing that happens under this earth without his knowledge. That is what we call the permissive will of God and the perfect will of God. Many things we suffer in this life are not perfect will of God, but God permitted them. A good example to this is the suffering of Job. It was not a perfect will of God that Job would suffer that, those afflictions and sicknesses. But God permitted him. God permitted Satan when he came for permission to go and tempt him and afflict him with all these uh, afflictions. One of the things that will help us to accept our cross is the life of silence. In the message of 11 January 2002, our blessed mother Mary said that the silent hearts, the silent souls, see through happiness in the Holy Cross. Why the restless souls, the noisy souls, see the cross as a cause. In the life of the saints, it was their life of silence that helped them to discover infinite values in the Holy Cross.
For instance, St. John Chrysostom said, to pray to God is to perform excellent acts of religion. To labor for God is work still more excellent, but to suffer for God is work more glorious than to raise the dead. I repeat, to pray to God is to perform excellent acts of religion. To labor for God is work still excellent, but to suffer for God is work more glorious than to raise the dead. Some people may be saying to God, why carrying their cross? Maybe, for instance, the cross of sickness. They may be promising God that if we can remove that cross from them, if he can heal them from that sickness, that uh, they will spread this devotion to the whole world. St. John Chrysostom is telling us that what is more important is accepting that cross, suffering for the sake of God, he said, it's more glorious than to raise the dead. St. Vincent de Paul said, it is a great misfortune to have nothing to suffer in this world. It is a great misfortune to have nothing to suffer in this world. And in the life of St. Francis of Assisi, whenever a day passes without him having anything to suffer, he will say that God has abandoned him. But on our own side, whenever we have anything to suffer, we will be saying that God has abandoned us. We will see it as a mark of God's hatred, not his love. St. Augustine also was of the opinion that the life of man on earth is a warfare Every day has its own cross and glory, joy and pain. There is nothing we are passing through in this life that the sense did not pass through even more than us. Is it bereavement? Maybe many people have died in your family and you are complaining to God. Carol Wotila, that is Saint Pope John Paul II, at the age of 20, was alone in this life. He had lost father, mother, sister, and brother. But he made it to become a Pope and a saint. Is his sickness? Many saints suffer terrible sicknesses and died of them like St. Teresa or the shy Jesus. She suffered tuberculosis and died of it at the age of 24. St. Benedict of Luz, she suffered chronic asthma all through her life and later contracted tuberculosis, tuberculosis of the lungs and died of it at the age of 35. Is it the recent one, Blessing Carlo Acutis, that suffered leukemia and died of it at the age of 15? Saint Alphonsus Ligur suffered partial blindness and many other sins. Are you passing through marriage crisis? Saint Rita of Cassia has a lot to say on this. She passed through a lot in her marriage, but today she is a saint. It was also reported that in the life of St. Teresa of Angela, she passed through a lot in this life, but in whatever she was passing through, she will hear the gentle voice of Jesus saying to her, this is how I treat my friends. This is how I treat my lovers. And she once replied to Jesus, if this is the way you treat your friends, it is no wonder you have so few. If this is the way you treat your lovers, your friends, it is no wonder you have so few. Can we be among those few? Can we be among the true friends of Christ, the true friends on the cross? Are you also passing through the cross of humiliation 
Nobody is talking anything good of you. You are being calumniated. You are being despised. Everybody is talking ill of you in your family, in your workplace. This is the cross that many saints desire and thirst for. It is the virtue of humility that will help us to see the true joy in this cross of humiliation. When we begin to see our vilenesses, our unworthiness, then whenever we are treated as nothing, we will have no difficulty in accepting it. St. Thomas Aquinas said, when you see anyone who desires esteem and honors and avoids contempt, and who when contradicted or neglected shows resentment and take it ill, you may be sure that such a person, though he were to perform miracles, is very far from perfection. For all his virtues is without foundation. What is that foundation? Is humility. St. Augustine of Hippo described humility as the mother, the queen, and the foundation of every other virtues. He said, in a soul where there is no humility, there can be no true virtue, but only mere appearances. So when we are humble, when we inculcate in our hearts, the virtue of humility. We will see true joy in this cross of humiliation. It was said that in the book, A Year with the Saints, a story was told about an abbot, about Petrus. He was revered for holiness and sanctity. But he desired to know if there was any soul on earth more pleasing to God at that time, so that he can learn from that soul. And an angel told him to go to a certain monastery. He told him that there, there were 419 nuns, and among them is one called Isdora, that she is more perfect than he, he, he is. So this abbot went in search of this monastery and this nun. The nun, Isdora, knew the truth that if you want to draw closer to God, if you want to be more pleasing to God, you must humiliate yourself. You must accept the cause of humiliation. You must humble yourself below others. So in that monastery, she used to humiliate herself below others. She considered herself the most unworthy among them. She used to go barefooted and she used to wear a rag on her head. Other nuns used to treat her as a fool and as an insane person. It was when this abbot arrived in this monastery and recommended himself to her prayers that the other nuns realized who she was and they started treating her with honor. But she, not wanting to be treated with honor, left that monastery to an unknown place. In the life of our Blessed Mother Mary, St. Alphonsus Miguri wrote that what drew God's attention was, her, was not her chastity or her faith or her other virtues but first and foremost, a profound humility, a profound humility. Therefore, when we are humiliated, when we are treated with contempt, we should know that it is a loving invitation from God for our purification and sanctification. So all these are the causes the Lord is asking us to carry and follow him. There are daily crosses, and there are special crosses that we carry for life. 
I will also like to read that from this book, 15 Levels of Perfection. So I would like to read us uh, some passages. What's in Nusi said about the age of cross bearers. At this level, Christ gives his friends their special crosses for their salvation and the salvation of many others. This is different from the daily cross which one carries every day. Well, this is a special kind of cross which aims at transforming man from natural man to spiritual man. This is a cross of sanctifying grace which purifies man from the stain of imperfection. This is the cross of love which teaches man how to love. All who reach this level and embrace this grace of love find that the love is sweet. If you embrace your cross faithfully at this level, many souls will come to God. If you help and carry the rejected crosses, many souls will be saved. Oh, Jesus at times boasts of his lovers at this level and allows them to be tested. How blessed is the one who triumphs over all the tests of love. His reward is great. Listen, a true friend of the cross does not complain over the weight of the cross. He always bears his cross with love and gladness. A cross bearer never rejects his cross. He is ready to embrace it because he knows that his salvation comes from the cross. And with his cross, he will achieve salvation, which has been won on the cross. So in this devotion to the most precious blood of Jesus, we are called to be cross bearers. We are called to help Jesus, not only to carry our own crosses, but to help Jesus to carry the rejected crosses, crosses others left for him to carry. Apart from all this, I have to say that to truly live a vicious life in today's world is like swimming against the ocean current. It is like carrying the cross. St. Louis de Montfort wrote in this book, Two Devotion to Mary. He said, it is difficult to persevere in justice because of the strange corruption of the world. The world is now so corrupt. It seems inevitable that religious hearts should be soiled, if not by its mud, at least by its dust, so that it has become a kind of miracle for anyone to remain in the midst of that impetuous torrent without being drawn in by it, in the midst of that stormy sea without being drowned in it. St. Louis Montfort wrote this in the 18th century, that the world is now corrupt. If he is to be in today's world, I don't know what he will write. So practicing some virtues in today's world is like swimming against the ocean current. It is like carrying the cross. For instance, the virtue of chastity. According to St. Ephraim, Chastity is a virtue that makes us to shine like the angels before God. A virtue that makes us to shine like the angels before God. The book of Sirach, chapter 26, verse 20, says that no prize is worthy of a continent or a chest, a chest soul. Even in one of the messages of this devotion, the saint that gave the message said that if all the riches of the world are put together, it will not be enough to reward somebody who lived a chaste life. 
In today's world, this shining version is being regarded by many as an outdated version. Some even see it as an impossible version, the virtue of chastity. Many things in today's world are geared towards the destruction, total eradication of this version, especially social media. In social media, nudity and pornography are the order of the day, and all of them are geared towards the destruction of this virtue. It is the virtue of mortification, which is one of uh, another forgotten virtue. It is the virtue of mortification that will help us to persevere in this virtue of chastity. Mortification is like formalin. There is a chemical the morticians use to preserve the corpses from decay in the mortuary called formalin. So, Mortification is like this form alone. It helps us to preserve our life of chastity. It helps us to preserve our souls from moral decay. Another most rejected virtue, I can say the most rejected virtue in today's world is the virtue of modesty. Many have forgotten that there is anything called modesty, that there is any virtue called modesty. Today, the world has embraced the culture of nakedness, the culture of hell. Nakedness is the order of the day. If you try to dress modestly in today's world, many will see you as somebody who is insane, somebody who is mad. Our Blessed Mother Mary said to St. Jacinta of Fatima in a private apparition before her death in 1920 that many immodest fashions may be introduced into the world. This is where we are today. I know she has said something like this in her previous apparition. There was a saint monk called Senilis. He lived in the fourth century. But he made many prophecies, especially of these things happening into this world. You can check it in the YouTube, the prophecy of Senilis. One of the things he said is that after the year 1900, towards the middle of the 20th century. He said, people's appearances will change and it will be impossible to distinguish men and women due to their shamelessness in dress and style of faith. This is what we see in today's world. If somebody is coming before you from a distance, it will be very difficult to ascertain whether that person is a man or a woman until the person draws closer to you. Today, men and women are putting on the same thing. Today, men are plating, women are plating their hands and men are also plating their hair. Women are putting on earrings and men are also putting on earrings. So what this sense said has come to fulfillment. Today, it is very difficult to distinguish men and women because of their shamelessness and dress. The saints also have many things to say on immodesty. St. Cyprian of Carthage says, the dress of the body should not discredit the good on the soul. The dress of the body should not discredit the good of the soul. Pope Pius, Pope St. Pius XII said, we must realize that those who dress scantily or otherwise, immodestly, even if unintentionally, 
may be stealth, an object of lust, and may cause others to commit adultery in their hands. Those who dress immodestly may even be culpable in the loss of other souls. They offend Jesus, tempt others into mortal sin, create scandal, both within and outside the church, profane the temple or the Holy Spirit, set a bad example for others, and degrade the society. Such dress also tends to promote promiscuity, fornication, rape, incest, and other sins of the flesh. He said, In fact, nothing you do may lead more people to sin than the very clothes you wear. So why dress this way? In another place, he said, Vice necessarily follows upon public nudity. Who can deny that the rise in fornication, adultery, rape, incest, contraception, abortion, pornography, and many other sins have not been fueled in large part by the rejection of Christian modesty? Not only is Christian modesty not old fashioned, it is necessary protection for the dignity of both men and women as well as protection of sanctity of marriage and sanctity of life. Our Lord Jesus and our Blessed Mother Mary want to preserve in the world through this devotion to the most precious blood. Some of these virtues that are about to enter into extinction, especially the virtue of modesty. We are called in this devotion to dress modestly and to be models of modesty to others. It will be a heavy blow on the heart of Jesus. It will be a, a serious wound in the heart of Jesus and Mary for a devotee of this precious devotion to be dressing immodestly. You should remember what the Lord said in the third anguish appeal. I am the one who will publicly expose naked. I am the one who will publicly expose naked. So the Lord has called us in this devotion to help him to preserve this virtue of modesty. I not talk of a devotee living an unjust life. That is uncalled for. We are called to be chaste. We are called to be modest. It is very difficult in today's world, actually, to live a modest life. But we are called to embrace it. We are called to be the model to others. We are called to show others examples of modesty. Having said all this, we have to know that one of the effects of this total consecration to our Blessed Mother Mary is that she will help us to live a righteous life. She will also help us to carry our crosses in following her son, Jesus Christ. I will read out what St. Louis de Montfort said on this, how our Mother Mary help us to carry our crosses, or how she prepares our crosses with love. I replied that it is quite true that the most faithful servants of the Blessed Virgin Mary, being also her greatest favorites, receive from her the greatest graces and favors of heaven, which are crosses. But I maintain that it is also the servants of Mary who carry these courses with more ease, more merit, and more glory. That good mother, all full of grace and of the unction of the Holy Ghost, prepares her servants' courses with so much maternal sweetness and pure love, 
as to make them blindly accept the good. No matter how bitter they may be in themselves, and I believe that a person who is to be devout and to live piously in Jesus Christ and consequently to suffer persecutions and carry his cross daily, and now we will never carry red crosses or we will not carry them joyously or perseveringly without a tender devotion to Our Lady, which is the sweetness and confection of crosses. Just as a person will not be able to eat unripe foods without a great effort, which he could hardly keep up unless they had been preserved in sugar. So St. Louis de Montfort is saying here that our Blessed Mother Mary helps us to carry our crosses. She helps in preparing our crosses with sweetness and with joy. On his way to Calvary, Christ received enormous consolation from his Blessed Mother, who was joining with him to Calvary. In the same way, when we are carrying our own crosses, our modern Mary comes to help us to carry the cross. She makes the cross lighter for us. She makes the cross sweeter for her children. So as already said, she, our mother Mary helps us to carry the cross, but it is only when we are totally consecrated to her without Preserving anything. As St. Louis de Montfort wrote in this book, O Devotion to Mary, that we should consecrate our whole life to her without reserving anything. He said, even a single hair. It is then that we can truly say with St. Pope John Paul II, Totus Tus, Mary, I am all thine, Mary. So in total consecration, as St. Louis de Montfort said in this book, we give to Jesus through Mary all that belongs to us in the order of nation, including our houses, our cars, our money, everything we have materially. That's, that is why it is called total consecration. You consecrate all this, your family, your husband or your wife and your children to her. Then also in the order of grace, we consecrate to her our soul, our will, our graces, the merits of all our good works. These are what we consecrate to Jesus through me. That is why it is called Total consecration, total without the reserve of anything. I would like to conclude with this hymn in 91 on this devotion. In 91 on the little holy hymn book. I don't have a good voice, but I will manage to sing it like that. I call you to be holy, my life is holy, my name is holy, your most live holy life. I call you to be holy, my life is holy, my name is holy, your most live holy life. You are precious to me, the love I have for you, motivated me to come and die for you. I am the good shepherd, I say you must be holy, as your Father in heaven, you must live a holy life. Who can see my holy face? Who can enter my kingdom? Only the holy ones who must live a holy life. Be known to you that all the saints in heaven, 
the holy ones, the most live holy life. Holiness is the master key that anyone who wants to enter the kingdom must live a holy life. Lord, I will be holy. Help me with your grace that I may be holy. I will live a holy life. I call you to be holy. My life is holy. My name is holy. You must live a holy life. I call you to be holy. My life is holy. My name is holy. You must live a holy life. So Christ is calling all of us to holiness of life. He even says, you must, you must live a holy life. Reflection. During his prayers, a pilgrim was complaining to Jesus about his cross being too heavy and burdensome. Jesus appeared to him and showed him a door. He opened the door and saw a room filled with different sized crosses. Jesus said, Take your pick. The pilgrim selected his ideal cross and went on his way. As the man examined his cross again, he realized he had chosen the exact same cross he had been complaining about. God never gives us a burden too heavy for us to carry because it is with his help and grace that we can carry that burden. Behold the cross of the Lord. When all adversity surrounds you, rejoice for the lion of the tribe of Judah has conquered. Saint Anthony of okay. Andor. Because. Reflection. Lord Jesus, help us to carry our crosses in life. As you carried our crosses to your death. So our resolution today, our resolution today is to carry our crosses, our daily crosses, and the cross, special crosses that Christ has prepared for us, to accept it with joy and not to be complaining over the crosses. Whenever we accept this cross with joy, it will be lighter. Whenever we accept it with joy, it will be sweeter. And again, whenever we accept it, our Blessed Mother Mary, whom we are about to consecrate ourselves to, will help us to carry that cross. Peace be with you all. And with your spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Through the intercession of our Blessed Mother Mary, may the Almighty God bless you all in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Be with you. And with your spirit. Veni Creator, come, O Creator Spirit, bless, and in our souls take up your rest. Come with your grace and heavenly aid to fill the heart which you have made. Great comforter, to you we cry, O highest gift of God most high, O fount of life, O fire of love, and sweet anointing from above. You in your many gifts are known, the finger of God's hand will own the promise of the Father thou, who does the tongue with power and thou. Kindle our senses from above and make our hearts overflow with love. With patience, firm and virtue high, the weakness of our flesh supply. Drive far from us the foe we dread 
and grant us your true peace instead. So shall we not with you, for guide, turn from the path of life aside. Oh, may your grace on us bestow, the Father and the Son to know, and evermore to hold confessed, yourself of each the Spirit blessed. All glory while the ages run, be to the Father and the Son, who rose from death the same to be, O Holy Ghost, eternally. Amen. Ave Maria Stella, hail bright star of ocean, God's son, mother blessed, ever sinless virgin, gate of heavenly rest, taking that sweet ave which from Gabriel came, peace confirm within us, changing ever's name. Break the captive's fetters, light on blindness for all our ills as burning, every bliss in flaws. Show thyself a mother, may the word divine, born for us, thy infant, hear prayers through thine. Virgin of excellent, mildest of the mind, read from guilt, preserve us pure and undefined. Keep our lives all spotless, make our way secure, till we find in Jesus joy forevermore. Through the highest heaven to the Almighty Three, Father, Son, and Spirit, one same glory be. Through the highest heaven to the Almighty Three, Father, Son, and Spirit, one same glory be. Amen. Magnificat. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. He looks on his servant in her lowliness. Henceforth, all ages will call me blessed. The Almighty works marvels for me. Holy his name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. He puts forth his arm in strength and scatters the proud hearted. He casts the mighty from their thrones and raises the lowly. He fills the starving with good things, sends the rich away empty. He protects Israel, his servant, remembering his mercy. The mercy promised to our fathers, to Abraham and his sons forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Litany of the Sacred Heart Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, Son of the Eternal Father, have mercy on us. 
heart of Jesus formed by the Holy Spirit in the womb of the Blessed Virgin. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus substantially united to the word of God. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus of infinite majesty. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, sacred temple of God. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, tabernacle of the Most High. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, house of God and gate of heaven. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, bonny furnace of charity. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, abode of goodness and love. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, full of goodness and love. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, abyss of all virtues. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, most worthy of all praise. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, king and center of all hearts. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, in whom are all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, in whom dwells the fullness of divinity. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, in whom the Father is well pleased. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, of whom fullness we have all received. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, desire of the everlasting hills. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, patient and most merciful. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, enriching all who invoke you. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, fountain of life and holiness. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, propitiation for our sins. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, loaded down with opprobrium. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, bruised for our offenses. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, obedient to death. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, pierced with a lance. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, source of all consolation. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, a life and resurrection. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, our peace and our reconciliation. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, victim for our sins. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, salvation of those who trust in you. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, hope of those who die in you. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, delight of all the saints. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, meek and humble of heart. Make our hearts like unto yours. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, look upon the heart of your most beloved Son and upon the praises and satisfaction that he offers you in the name of sinners and to those who implore your mercy. In your great goodness, grant forgiveness in the name of the same Jesus Christ, your Lord, as your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. St. Louis de Montfort's prayer to Jesus. O oh, most loving Jesus, allow me to pour out my gratitude before you for the grace you have bestowed upon me in giving me to your Holy Mother through the devotion of holy slavery, that she may be my advocate in the presence of your majesty and my support in my extreme misery. At last, O oh Lord, 
I am so wretched that without this dear mother, I should be certainly lost. Yes, Mary is necessary for me at your side and everywhere that she may appease you are just rough because I have so often offended you that she may save me from the internal punishment of your justice, which I deserve, that she may contemplate you, speak to you, pray to you, approach you and please you, that she may help me to save my soul and the souls of others. In short, Mary is necessary for me that I may always do your holy will and seek your greater glory in all things. Ah, would that I could proclaim throughout the whole world the mercy that you have shown to me. Would that everyone might know I should be already damned were it not for Mary. Would that I might offer worthy thanksgiving for so great a blessing. Mary is in me. Oh, what a treasure. Oh, what a consolation. And should I not be entirely hers? Oh, what ingratitude. My dear Savior, send me dead rather than such a calamity, for I would rather die than live without belonging entirely to Mary. With Saint John the Evangelist at the foot of the cross, I have taken her a thousand times for my own and as many times have given myself to her but if I have not yet done it as you, dear Jesus, would wish, I now renew this offering as you desire me to renew it. And if you see in my soul or my body anything that does not belong to this August princess, I pray you to take it and cast it far from me. For whatever in me does not belong to Mary is unworthy of you. O Holy Spirit, grant me all these graces. Plant in my soul the tree of true life, which is Mary. Cultivate it and tend it so that it may grow and blossom and bring forth the fruit of life in abundance. O Holy Spirit, give me great devotion to Mary, your faithful spouse. Give me great confidence in her maternal heart and an abiding refuge in her mercy, so that by her, you may truly form in me Jesus Christ, great and mighty unto the fullness of his perfect age. Amen. We come to the end of this class. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>